Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey Nine, yes James, do you know what date it is today? Uh, November the 4th, why? Not anymore. Remember, remember, the 5th of November. Gunpowder, treason, and plot. I have no, no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Okay, before this rather splendid review of Fallout London begins, I would like to shout out my friend, Agent Monroe, for the request to review Fallout London in the first place and the massive emotional boost on the day of my seizure. The first one James had in over a year, now onto the business at hand. The trailer of this review, a message has been encoded into Morse code. Here is the actual message encoded into Morse code. Died today. The world mourned, and on days like these, we're all Brits. Zero 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 one one two zero two four. For all you Fallout diehards on the channel, do not do not know what this is. This is a direct reference to a well-known Fallout 3 bridge creepypasta, the number stations. We have decided to provide a link to the Fallout 3 number stations creepypasta and the creepypasta wiki. Splendid. As with all this aside, it is now back to Nine for the review itself. Oh, what is it, Roman? Tells Nine here from Sonic Prime. This time we are breaking a retro gaming takeover of Disabled Gaming Reviews, but with good reason. This time I reviewed the fastest redeemed title in good old games' history. Was this game worth the wait, or should this game be left forever in the nuclear wasteland? Well, without further ado, let's find out. The Fallout series is one of the most recognizable franchises in gaming in general. The series' heritage stemmed back to the mid-90s. The first game in the series, Fallout, a post-nuclear role-playing game, was released exclusively for the PC by Interplay Entertainment in 1997. Gameplay-wise, it was pretty much a point-and-click style game, very similar to Blizzard Entertainment's Diablo. The success of the original game spawned sequels and various spin-offs, for example, Fallout Tactics Brotherhood of Steel. Fast forward to 2008 when the Fallout series that we know and love started, as Fallout 3, developed by Bethesda Entertainment, now owned by Microsoft, was released for the PC and various consoles, including the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The reception of this game was nothing more than astronomical. It outsold the previous two entries of the series combined on its first week of release. Yeah guys, let that sink in. The Ultimate Edition of Fallout, which included all expansions like Point Lookout and The Pit, won Game of the Year of 2009. The final stop of this tour of the Fallout series is Fallout 4, released to the public in 2015. One of the biggest attractions of PC gaming in general is modding. The ability to take a version of the game made by the original developers and change certain aspects or create new ones altogether, which allow people to create a version of the game which is truly their own. For console players, this is not exactly new. Other titles made by Bethesda have full modding support for console versions. 
This title in particular is a modification for the PC version of Fallout 4, and is set in the year 2237. A nuclear war between America and China has purged the world into one big nuclear wasteland. You plays the Wayfarer. You have been abandoned and experimented on by the corrupt government of London, the Gentry, and the recent attack on London has transformed the city, or should I say, what's left of it, into a wasteland which is contested by various factions. It is up to you to pledge allegiance to the various factions and take down the Gentry. The accessibility scores are as follows. To start things off, visibility gave an 11. Every element off the screen can be customized via the gameplay section of the options menu. This allows a player with a visual impairment to play this game with no issues. To lose some of that momentum, audibility gave a 10. The dialogue during this game is subtitled, so a player with a hearing impairment will find no issues when playing this game. However, customization options in terms of font size of these titles could be more beneficial. This option reduces the risk of a player getting any eye strain when reading these subtitles. To lose a little more of that momentum, mobility it gave a 9.5. When playing this game with a keyboard and mouse, the controls can be fully customized to suit your impairments. Better still, there is full controller support for the game. You can enable controller support via the gameplay section of the options menu. While using a controller, you can customize the button layouts to suit your impairments. However, there is no legacy-stick layout available, so players with mobility impairments will be tethered to play the game using a standard keyboard and mouse. To finish off on a high note, gameplay game at 11. Now, James admits it. This is his first time of experiencing a Fallout game firsthand. To be honest with you, the game is fantastic, even for total conversion mod standards. The game has the exact same amount of polish as an official game made by Bethesda themselves. It is an absolute joy to explore the city of London, completing quests and, of course, getting into a little largy bargy. This game has a lot of replay value as the story changes depending on whichever faction you pledge allegiance to. As par for the course for a modern Fallout game, this game is feverishly addictive. Seriously, this game is what kept James sane during the summer months, when he had a lot of personal issues for him to deal with. The open world element, as seen in a lot of modern Fallout games, in his opinion, is a breath of fresh air from the linear nature of the classic games, for example, Max Payne. In total, he has racked up a total of 19 hours of playtime in this mod. And yet, there is a plenty more gameplay for him to be experienced. Also, in terms of system requirements, the game is relies on an older version of Fallout 4 to run, so it doesn't require a godlike GPU to run this game. The mod doesn't require a lot of technical know-how to install and run. If you own Fallout 4 on good old games, then install the base game, then redeem Fallout London, it's free by the way, to add to the game to your GOG library, download and let the installer run its course, then launch the game from the launcher and enjoy the game. Bish bash bosh. However, if you own the game on Steam, the process may be a little bit more complex. First off, install the game as normal, then download and run the downgrade tool located on Nexus Mods. This little tool downgrades your current installation of Fallout 4 to the pre-next-gen upgrade in which Fallout London requires. Then, redeem Fallout London on GOG to add it to your library. Again, this is free. Let the installer run its course. Then, every time you want to play the game, remember to launch it directly from the full-on launcher, which is only available on GOG. However, if you want to revert the game to vanilla Fallout 4, you need to completely both Fallout London and the base game in all folders, and re-download Fallout 4 with a fresh install. In summary, Fallout London feels like an official expansion to Fallout 4, done by Bethesda themselves. This month's production started out in 2019, and by Jove, 
It's certainly worth the wait. If you're a Fallout fan and is looking for a new experience to play, or getting into Fallout in general, I seriously cannot recommend this game enough to you. And the overall score is a massive 103.75%. This is Nine coming in from Sonic Prime signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review.